Okay. So let's take it a step further. So we saw the basic one. This, is, uh, this was, I think, an AIGA piece. So watch this. This is a snake fold as well, a little more complicated. Folds out, up, over, keeps going, keeps going. So it unrolls all the way around. Now, one thing to take a look at here is you'll notice how much shorter this last piece is right here. That's because um, folding compensation basically has to happen in both directions um, to get each of these pieces to kind of tuck into each other and roll their way around. So there's some math going on here. The snake fold templates are some of the most complex to create because there's an awful lot to consider all the way around, but the um, experience for these are really wonderful. Okay, this is awesome. This is called a traveling snake fold. So now taking it even further. This is from um, Miller Brooks for uh, Kimball Office. And one of the reasons I love this piece and I love to share it is because it's an outstanding example of appropriate choice of format for the content. Okay, so this is a piece that is advertising basically modular furniture. Okay, so it opens out. Now, a traveling snake does not follow the classic kind of spiraling snake format. A traveling snake can go any direction, but it still unrolls, okay? Up and over and up again. So amazing. Hi, come on in. Um, amazing format, and I love conceptually. Do I have any designers in here? It's okay if I don't. Okay, great, I have some designers. You know, wonderful conceptual idea here of using the format, really driving home the idea of uh, the modular furniture, the format, um, and also I want to share a production uh, note here. They had what's called a box, they worked with their printer at, at a very early stage, and when you're using a specialty fold, it's pretty important because um, they can really offer you some you know, extra production help that can make or break, a, especially these specialty formats. Well, their printer applied what's called a box score right off the cover right here, and it's basically two scores close to each other and kind of almost makes like a mini spine. And the reason for that is because we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, basically eight panels here. And when those all roll, there's some, you know, thickness that happens. So if they hadn't done that, if they hadn't worked with the printer, the cover would have kind of sat like this when the whole thing was folded. So having that little bit of extra help and production help from the printer really made the difference. The piece lays beautifully flat. So um, just an awesome piece. Okay, this is um, an asymmetrical accordion. And um, this is by Maureen Weiss Design. And I love this concept. Um, what it is, is a, a standard accordion. Basically, it's just the panels that kind of zigzag back and forth, okay? That's the standard characteristic of an ac accordion fold. Well, asymmetrical accordions have panels of varying length. And so you can create kind of different experiences based on the length of the panels. So you can see here, this was a promo for a photographer. So also just a, another great example of an appropriate format for the subject matter. But you can see here, long, long, short, short. This is medium. I'll show you a top view and you'll understand. Medium, medium, and long, long. And what it did is it created this really interesting texture and the, and the photographer was able to crop his imagery and let people experience it whatever way he wanted to. Here's a little top view so you get a feel for what that does, okay? Beautiful piece. Now, one of the other things I'm showing you today is kind of the frivolous or less practical application turned into a practical application. So the previous one was really the fun version, the super fun version of an, accord, uh, an asymmetrical accordion. Now what I'm doing is I'm going to show you another asymmetrical accordion. This is by Barbara Cooper Design. She took the concept of this format of doing varying panel length, but she turned it into a very practical piece for a, uh, one of, a building at, a, at UCLA. It was an invitation to an event. She did a couple of things. The cover is short. So she did a short trim cover, which created kind of a, a nice little sidebar area. Okay, so short trim cover is kind of a nice uh, trick. Now watch what she did. She did two short panels on the inside and one longer panel on the end. So you can see how a lot of times you can apply these principles 
in more practical ways, depending on what you're doing and what the project is. So I loved this because this became a really nice sidebar from, for some critical information and just a wonderful, wonderful piece. And there's the back. So she even did something fun with the imagery on the back. Um, great format. And again, just a much shorter, more practical version of that other piece, which I loved. This is called a swinger fold. Usually, there we go. Usually gets a chuckle. Okay. <laughs> okay. So this, this is from Samet Blackstone and Associates. And um, this is also a really nice example of, um, for specialty types of uh, folded formats, it's not always a complex folding style. Sometimes it's a simple folding style with um, either a die cut or something applied that turns it into kind of a specialty format. So the way the swinger fold works is it uses kind of scores and dies to work with kind of the planes of the different panels. I'll show you, you'll get a better feel for it in the next photo, but. Okay, so what you can see here is this is just a three panel accordion. And there's a score, no score, score, no score, score, no score, score. And so when you activate the accordion, what you get is this dimensional swinging effect and kind of a um, structural type of a format that can be very dimensional. And um, these are also beautiful. This was a, a holiday card. And, you know, they're a wonderful kind of self-standing piece that becomes really, um, really, really pretty. So I love that one. And again, simple folding style with a unique die. This is called a pop-out accordion. These are so fun. Um, this, again, works on an accordion format, three panels. This in particular, however, you can use this technique with all sorts of um, other different formats. But this is a, this is a three panel from uh, Philips Graphic Finishing. OK, so watch. The way this works is there's a score, score, die cut across the fold, die cut across the fold. What you're doing is creating these little boxes and so what's interesting about this piece is it's not the folding style that makes it, you know, more, a little bit uh, more costly to produce. It's that you have to pay somebody to go like this, right? We're popping boxes in the opposite format, in the opposite direction. So, but these are really wonderful. And you can do, um, I have versions that are stacked, that have all different variations on kind of the configuration of the cubes. This is just a more simple format. Um, but just really neat. And one of the things that I like about this piece is that they did kind of design wise is if you look at this right here, when the piece is closed, it frames the save the date on the far right panel. Uh, does it show that somewhere? See how it lines up with save the date? Just from a design standpoint, it's really neat because they kind of draw the eye there by using that die cut and then it turns into this dimensional piece. Very cool. Oh, this is fun too. Okay. I love them all. I, every single one is like a surprise to me, but okay. <laughs> this is a stepped accordion swinger combo. Okay. So we learned um, the swinger kind of principle. Um, we haven't done a stepped accordion yet, but stepped accordions basically are, um, it's still the zigzag accordion format. However, the panels taper in width. So you create a stepped effect. All right. So what this is, is this is a combination of a stepped accordion with a swinger fold. And what they did is create this really neat dimensional experience. So this is straight on. This was for an architectural firm. OK, what they did, short, short, medium, medium, long, long. And then the swinger panel comes out here. So this die cuts out of this panel right there. And so what happens? is you get this really neat self-standing piece. Whenever I see this, I think this has got to be somebody's Christmas card. Like this has got to be somebody. There is a great idea waiting to happen with this format, I can, I can tell. I mean, it's already a great uh, piece. But I also like how these short panels kind of frame it and create kind of a label for what's standing behind it. So just a really, really neat piece. Um, paper choice on, on just about any format is pretty critical. Okay, so on this one, especially anything that's self-standing, very critical paper choice, um, but just a, such a cool, impactful piece. Love it. Okay, time for my folding tricks. And I promise there's going to be a whole bunch of other stuff at the end, too. But I wanted to kind of lead in with some cool things. Um, okay, so as I was saying, I've just collected thousands of things. 
And so you start to see patterns, different tricks people use on high budget and low budget pieces that get them a lot of high impact. So I have 10 tricks for you. Okay, number 10 is simple guillotine trims. So what's neat about a guillotine trim is it kind of can look like a die cut, but on the cheap, all right? So I have a couple examples here. Um, on the left is a short trim cover. That's actually just a fold placement issue, not really per se a guillotine trim, but it looks like a short trim, so I put it in this category um, because it's nice. Sometimes just a simple short trim, and I'll show you some stuff, um, can make all the difference. The second is an angled accordion. So that's taking an accordion fold. The printer basically makes a jig for the guillotine. Um, you know, slants the paper, cuts it at an angle, and you can get this really nice waterfall effect. And you can play with the depth of that. And if you, uh, uh, to just give you a feel for low versus high budget, okay, I, I have a waterfall piece that, uh, that an angled accordion where they just did an elaborate die and it kind of makes a scene. You know, you can spend money on it or you can, you know, save money and do kind of the simple straight guillotine trim. The other thing I like here is this is like a little corner trim. So you can take a broadside piece, so that's like when you when you take a piece and kind of like a signature, so like a folded sig, okay? And it, you fold it in, in half and you get kind of that corner and, and you can do an angled cut off the corner and it creates like a little visual violator, so to speak, or a graphic um, teaser, but it looks like a die cut and all it is is a little cut corner off the guillotine. I have a few examples. This is an angled accordion from Upshift Creative Group. They're actually in Chicago, I believe. Um, but just a neat use of the angled accordion, and they used it just for visual texture. I have versions where people have used them almost as tabs, um, but you can really play with the depth of that. Very, just kind of pretty piece. This is very fun. Um, this is an accordion with angled trims. This is from Design Ranch. And this is a four panel accordion. And what they did is they did angled trims on opposing corners of an accordion fold. And it really also, I do want to say one thing about this, is it really worked well with their concept. They were doing this kind of zen-themed event, and so um, it really went well with their concept. I wouldn't suggest cutting corners on everything, but it works really well for what they were doing. So watch this. So when it opens, you got this really neat shape and this very beautiful piece. Now one thing to note about this, um, this piece is not, let's say, quite as easy as a simple guillotine trim um, for, you know, flat sheets because these actually had to be trimmed after the piece is folded. So they're trimmed in smaller batches and there's a pretty critical alignment there. However, it's still not a die cut. It's a guillotine trim. So um, just a really, really neat piece. This is my example of just a standard trifold with a short trim cover. And I love how, this was uh, Molly McCoy, she's an illustrator and a designer. And what I really liked was, you know, she could have had just a standard full cover, but I like just that simple trim can just make it a little bit special and, um, or, you know, a short panel or whatever you want to call it, is just makes it just a little bit special, the experience. And, you know, sometimes very simple things like that can take really basic formats and make them interesting. I actually have um, a set in my collection where it was, it's, it's a series of brochures and they just did these trifolds and they did short trim covers and the, the fold in panel is full color, like just a solid color. And it was for a college and um, each one was a different subject or something. And so they kind of had this series of just these short trim cover trifolds. Each one had a different color kind of as the theme on the side and the text ran up the side. And it just is nice, you know, it's just something little. But, um, and from a production standpoint, nothing, you know. Um, number two is directional and format changes. So this is just something to think about. The idea that a lot of times we're kind of, we get used to our formats that we work in all the time, our sizes and our shapes. And, um, you know, it's really interesting sometimes to take our, you know, four by nine format and switch it to a nine by four or something. You know, all of a sudden everything changes and you've got a fresh layout and a fresh perspective. So, you know, you might be in the same dimension, but entirely different direction. My one word of caution in this area is, uh, I'll give you a life experience from when I was uh, in my early days as a designer, but um, I uh, worked for RIT's University Publications, and we decided we were gonna revamp the, um, this was when applications were on paper, now everything's online, but they were on paper at the time. So we were gonna blow out our, our um, application and make it really neat, so we made it big, and, you know, gave it a lot of space and did some neat things. And everybody loved it, right? And it went out, and everybody's going nuts for it. And then uh, until a few weeks later, we get a call from the admissions office saying, thanks for the gigantic application that we can no longer fit in the file folders. So 
just one note of caution with any type of directional or format change is to make sure you understand where it's going, uh, you know, kind of that end point, because you never know when something's going to go into a folder, a special envelope, a custom literature holder, lots of reasons sometimes why we're in certain sizes. I think asymmetry is one of my favorite tips. So many times when we are creating materials, marketing materials, or whatever, we're kind of, you know, looking to achieve symmetry. But sometimes simple uh, tricks that give you kind of an asymmetrical effect can be really, really nice and kind of uh, inspiring for people. So these are a few samples. This is just a gatefold with the center pushed off center, basically with the brake pushed off center. Just a nice little trick. Um, that is a closed gate in the lower left, but where the two panels on the left are shorter than the two panels on the right. And what you get when it's closed, folded down, is you get it like a stepped edge. So it's just a nice little effect. Um, the one on the right is my favorite cheap, cheap asymmetry trick, and that's called a stepped uh, double parallel. And a double parallel is basically in half and in half again. A lot of us have used those. A stepped double parallel is short of in half, and then the cover folds short. So it's still two parallel folds, but all you're doing is shifting their placement, and what you get is a stepped edge on the cheap. Okay, so I'm gonna show you a real one. Okay, so this is from uh, my friend Kelsey Grafton, and uh, she's an illustrator. This is a step double parallel uh, oblong format, so I also like that it's kind of a unique, you know, a, a different type of format. So it basically folds in half, or short of in half, and then the cover folds short, and you get the stepped edge. And you can really play with the depth of those steps. And again, it's just two parallel folds. Like from a production standpoint, no big deal at all. There's just a little glamour shot of it all open. But again, just two parallel folds. This is an accordion with a long trailing panel. This is from CJ Graphics in Toronto. And this is just a neat s sample of asymmetry and also a sample of one of my other tips, which is a long trail edge. But um, when it's flat, there's the one side that's just kind of a single thickness, and on the right, it's a thicker side, and then watch what happens. It accordions out on the right side. So you've got a long trailing panel, and so you've got this kind of asymmetri asymmetrical experience that's really fun. Okay, so number four is broadside folds. This one's just kind of simple. The idea that you can gain a lot of um, real estate for marketing copy just by basically turning it, adding a right angle fold, basically, and turning it into a broadside. And then you can do some fun things with that. I'm gonna show you some neat tricks in a little bit um, for uh, different ways to use broadside folds, but just a great way to get some extra real estate without really increasing the production cost much. It's just adding a right angle fold, which increases the di difficulty a little, but you know, not a big deal. Okay, so number five is visual tricks. And you know, not a folding tip per se, but the reason I like to share this is because um, there are a lot of neat little cheap things you can do and by increasing engagement through visuals. So, and you can do that with little short panels and things like that. Okay, this is one of the oldest pieces in my collection, but I still love to share it because, um, one, it's funny because phones kind of don't look like this anymore. But um, this was an old Verizon piece, but it's a great example of engagement and visual tricks. So what they did is they did a little short panel, and this piece was a, uh, a self-mailer, and that was tabbed closed, a little short panel, and so the phone was on the hook, or on the cradle or whatever, and then basically when somebody opened it, you, you forced them to pick up the phone and have the phone you know, in their hand by opening it, which is really fun. And then um, there's a little message, and then you know the cradle's empty. So it's kind of this idea, you've just done a little visual trick, you've just gotten somebody engaged in the piece, and engagement is the key to response. So just a really neat little old piece that I like. This is another just simple example, how they did a short fold, and there was a message there, and then when you opened it, the message changed. So there's a lot of little things that you can do just with imagery, and like I said, they did a short fold, um, and then it just folded down. So this is kind of a neat example of what can be done. Okay, uh, this is number six, short folds. This is actually one of my favorite um, kind of broadside tricks that you can do. So um, I showed you broadsides before. That's when you basically fold in half, okay, and you kind of double the area. Well, you can also do what's called a short fold, and so you can fold short of in half, and you can create kind of banner areas like that, and you can do those to the inside or outside. But my favorite short fold trick is called an inverted short fold. And that's when you're folding instead of from the top to pull up, 
you're folding from the bottom and pulling down, so like this. And what you can do with this is a couple neat things, and I'll show you a few samples. <clears throat> this is called a closed gate with an inverted short fold. This is from Mackenzie Childs. They create hand-painted um, you know, housewares and things like that, very pretty. So they did this piece. It was a closed gate fold. So it could have been nice just as a closed gate fold, very nice. However, what they did is when you opened it up, they did a little shallow inverted short fold right here. And the reason they did this is because this is a um, kind of a catalog piece. These were pieces that they were selling and they didn't want people to get kind of caught up in all the, you know, all the details and the pricing and everything. They wanted them to fall in love with the piece first, open it and get the info. So that's why they did that. So they basically added a right angle fold to a closed gate. Okay, this is so neat, but you gotta, gotta bear with me on this. This is a roll with an inverted short fold to the outside and a nested accordion. Okay, this is so cool. This is from HBP Baltimore, um, and uh, this is so cool. Okay, so this is a roll fold. This is actually the back cover. There is an accordion fold nested into what's called a glueless pocket. So this is an inverted short fold right here. You're gonna see in the photo, you're gonna understand how this works. But basically, what they did is they created a big roll fold. There's a short fold that folds up, an inverted short fold that folds up, and that creates tension on the back cover that creates a pocket to put something in. So watch this. Out comes the accordion fold. Okay, so then the piece rolls out, and then you pull down, so you've got all this extra real estate, but then you've also got this nice short fold that creates uh, what's called a glueless pocket. Glueless pockets are awesome because uh, one, they don't use glue. Two, um, you know, the thing about a glueless pocket is um, unlike a pocket folder, when a pocket folder's empty, you say, where's the stuff, right? When a, when a uh, inverted uh, short fold is, I mean, it looks just as nice with or without stuff in it, right? So you don't kind of go, what's missing? But you have the ability, as long as you have tension, a fold on either side, you can put light uh, printed materials in there, which is really, really nice. So um, the other great thing about this is it is machinable. So uh, this format, you know, these types of formats are very machinable and quite practical. So um, really, really nice. And by the way, these don't have to be to the outside. They can be to the inside. You can do them with... Uh, you know, uh, trifolds, as long as there's tension on the sides, you can do it in pretty much any format. But this one I loved because they used the outside back cover, just kind of fun. Number seven is die cuts. Now die cuts are, you know, still kind of an extra expense, so to speak. Um, however, this is an example of how um, you can do some littler things that may, that, you know, give you a lot of high impact. But also I always like to kind of remind people that printers do save their dies. So you also might wanna take a little trip to some of your favorite printers and see what they have, just so that you know kind of what they've got and you might be able to do what's called a pre-enjoyed die, I like to call it, where you might be able to um, benefit from a die that's already made, so. Okay, this is a roll with a die cut cover. This is from Nina Paper, oblong format. I love how they just did a very simple die cut on the cover and then the piece rolls out into a four panel roll fold. Very nice. And the concept on this piece also had kind of arrow themes, so the piece, when it rolls out, becomes a, just a big arrow, basically. This is a gate with a locked cover. This is from Davidson Beluso, and this was a holiday card, kind of a green-themed holiday card. And what they did is just a gate fold, and each side, each panel has a half a tree and a slit. Kind of nice. And then when it opens up, so basically you just put the two together, slide them, and they become a locked cover, which is just kind of a nice effect. And it's at Happy Greener Holidays. So it was just kind of a neat piece on, you know, recycled. It was kind of a fun holiday piece. This is a trifold with a locked cover from GV Creative. She's in California. And this is way cool. Okay, so it's a trifold, and the fold in panel is cut at an angle. And then there's a die cut slit right in the cover panel that's right here. So what happens is that fold in panel tucks in and locks the cover shut. So you can see there how that panel tucks in. And there's kind of a better feel for that panel just goes like this. There's the slit right there. And then that panel just folds and locks right in. Very nice.
They also did a soft touch UV and some other things. It's really just a neat piece. The production quality was really nice. This is a, another trifold with a locked cover. This was Colorcraft of, of Virginia. And this is kind of a neat, simple little thing they did. They did a short trim cover with a tab right here. This tab is tucked into the fold-in panel. So think of it this way. This fold-in panel has a slit right here. The cover has a tab. Put them together, lock the cover. So now you can see the tab. There's the slit right there. And that piece also had a little extra. They had a little pocket in there too, but, but you kind of get the idea. That idea of a lock, a locking mechanism on the cover is pretty cool. Oh, I love this one. Okay, this is a this is a trifold with a like a little tucked cover that I love. Um, this is also Colorcraft of Virginia. I love it's the simplicity of this piece. It's just a trifold. What they did is they did a short trim cover, which is again nice little technique. Then they did a little half circle die cut. You probably can't see it from where you are, but they also did a blind emboss of their logo, which was just a really nice touch. And so this cover tucks in right here. And what I like about this also is once that cover is not tucked there, that that little die cut just disappears into nowhere. You know, it doesn't disrupt the layout or anything. So you just untuck and, you know, it opens up into a really nice format. So again, very simple format, nice little technique. Um, love that piece. Okay, so number eight is extended panels. So if you have um, an open trailing edge, so that would be like accordion folds, um, double parallels, things like that where you've got an open edge coming out of the out of the folding machine, you can do what's called an extended trailing edge or an extended panel. And a simple trick, but what you can get is kind of a stepped effect or kind of a tab or, or whatever along the edge. So I've just got an illustration here of the three panels. I'm going to show you a real one, but you'll get the, the idea of what I mean. So this was a piece for Jaguar from Lithographics in California. And so this is a, a, an accordion, and so the, the three leading panels are short, and then that last panel is long. So you just get kind of a nice effect, and it feels just a little bit special. And again, they chose it as an area to put their logo and just kind of have some nice quiet space, which is really nice. And again, very simple from a production standpoint. All they're doing is leaving that trail edge that comes out of the machine long. OK, so number nine is interaction. And um, you know, it's been proven, especially I've done a lot of research in mail, um, it's been proven that if you can get people to engage and interact with the piece, response goes up. So this tip is just, in general, interaction. And it can be quite simple. Um, I'm going to show you, what do I have? OK, I have actually an interesting case study on this. This was from Evoke Advertising. All this is is a roll fold. And what they did is uh, it had like a door on the cover. And it just said, you know, uh, knock on the door to your career success, something like that. So they mailed it many times just with a basic cover. Well, then they had this idea. They said, hey, what if we added a panel off the cover, folded it back on itself, glued it, and had a little die-cut door that people can open with a guy standing in it, right? Sounds simple enough. Okay. Well, when they sent the door version, the response rate went up 30% over previous mailings by adding the little door that people perf open and look at the guy. So um, love the idea that, look, you can do, you know, sometimes it's a die-cut. It can be um, different engagement techniques, sometimes it's a special effect, um, you know, that kind of sensory experience that can drive a response. So um, interaction, always be thinking about how you can get somebody to interact with the piece. Oh, this is also a great piece. Um, this is from GLS Companies and um, in Minnesota, and this was a mail piece that they did, and this piece slid into there. They had a zip strip um, right there, and you would tear it open, and it had a message. Once you would open that zip strip, and there was a message waiting for you, and then you'd open it up and take the brochure out. This piece um, was about $22,000 uh, to produce plus postage, and it generated $900,000 in sales pipeline. So amazingly engaging. Um, it was selling a software subscription to a service for a dental group. Okay, so number 10 is short panels. And this is just an easy, cheap trick. You can play with the length of the panels, and you can get some interesting. Uh, the panels can go to the outside or the inside. They can become kind of an opening mechanism, or they can tuck in and be like a tear-off coupon, things like that. This is a piece from Mercedes. Uh, this, was a, this was a mail piece. 
and it just has a little uh, short flap or a short panel, and you know they were able to draw your eye to a uh, big visual plus drawing your eye to that nice little sidebar area. So very simple little trick, but you can do a lot, and you can also you know add a die cut shape. You can do all sorts of things if you want to spend the money too, but you can go on the cheap side and just change the length of that panel. This is a closed gate with short trim panels. This was Campbell Ewald for USPS. And this is a closed gate fold. And what they did is they did the two um, fold-in panels are short. One of them has a die cut shape. The other one is, is plain. But what's neat is it kind of gives you two sidebars with a focal point in the middle. Um, one thing to note on um, gate folds is if there's a gap greater than um, two inches, it becomes pretty unwieldy in the machine. It becomes, from a production standpoint, much harder to produce. So I like showing this one, but just with some precaution on production. But um, you know, depending on what it is you're working on, you can do some really neat things by trimming, you know, changing the length of the panels. OK, so finale here. I've got some really neat things uh, to finish up with. This is called a tulip fold, Colorcraft of Virginia. This piece is from 1996. And I love it because it's kind of avant-garde for 96, so watch this. It opens up like that. Wild. So what it is is basically cubes that are stacked, and the scores go in opposing directions, and it allows it to kind of tulip fold open. There are many variations on this format, but this is one of the coolest. Um, and so it's an old MCI piece. Um, I love it though. It's like my little relic in my in my collection. A little glamour shot for everybody, just because. This is um, an open gate with short panels. Um, I, open gates are pretty uncommon, but they're really really neat. You can do a lot with them. Um, an open gate basically has the panels that fold in, and then it has panels that fold back out in the other direction. That's why it's called an open gate. Um, usually, the panels that fold back out are to the width of the piece, kind of of the width of the fold-in panel. They usually go back in the other direction. What this company did, this was uh, uh, ITP, um, is the printer on this one. What they did is they trimmed those reverse panels short, so they made a set of doors. It was for an opening or something for a, a, a building. So what happens is you kind of got this experience of opening doors or a grand opening, you know, it's really neat. And I love how uh, uh, open gates are also kind of that self-standing format that's very nice. This is a two-way circular gate. This is Whitmore Group and Jay Kozak Creative. Um, this piece starts as a circle. The sides fold in, the tops fold in, and then they belly banded it. So this is how it goes. Off goes the belly band. You can see here, folds out and then down. Now, this is a great example of what I call the pre-enjoyed die. This piece was done. The printer then went to some of his favorite clients and said, hey, we just did this recently. What do you think? And people took a look at it. Excellent. And one of his clients said, hey, we've got a golf tournament coming up. You know exactly where this is going, right? Big golf ball, right? They use the die, cool fold. They got their invite. So, you know, sometimes too, just from a printer's perspective, you know, you can show off doing these nice formats. You can take them out and they become wonderful, um, you know, kind of catalysts for other work or, you know, idea generators. So, um, just such a neat little piece. Also, I like showing this one because um, a lot of formats, certain formats can become what's called a carrier piece. So they have kind of a cavity on the inside and they can carry other things. This piece becomes a nice carrier piece. This is called a long triangle fold from Whitmore Group. Um, this piece was digitally printed. It was a leave behind for a trade show. But it's got diagonal folds that create a split cover. Kind of get a feel for that right there. So basically, folds diagonal like out there's two parallel folds two diagonal folds a little hard to describe but you'll get what I'm talking about so diagonal fold diagonal fold parallel parallel fold so very cool and so you get that kind of neat split cover from it this is an iron cross with a layered die so an iron cross format is that kind of plus shape that we've probably all seen and maybe didn't know what they were called um, so this piece, what I love is they take that format, but they add a die cut. If you're already doing a custom die, what's, what's a few other little details, right? Well, for their concept, they did this, we think, outside the box concept. And so each panel 
of the, um, of the Iron Cross has a die cut on it. And when you combine them and stack them together, it creates this kind of dimensional layered die on the cover, all right? And I've also, by the way, seen this done with um, squares that start big and get smaller, and it kind of becomes a mat. It kind of frames an image. You can do really beautiful things. I have a piece that's a bound piece, and they actually did it with a roll fold, where the cover of the piece is a roll fold, and they did the squares that get smaller, and it just made this beautiful cover on a bound piece. So um, anyway, there's lots of ways to do this, but I like this one because it's a fun format uh, of an iron cross. This is a hexagon format iron cross. This is from Texas State. And um, so the iron cross format was that plus shape. There are several variations on the iron cross format. This is one of them. This is really wild. So it's a little hexagon shaped piece. Opens up, out, all the way around. So you can see here how tricky this one becomes because each one of these little panels have to get just slightly smaller to tuck in there really nicely. But what a neat piece. I also like to share this one because this is another really good example of appropriate format for the content. I collect kind of successes and failures. And um, you know some of the failures that I see are you know great format, too much junk put in, loses direction, you don't even know what they're doing. What, what was their point, right? What's neat about this, chunky little nuggets of copy, Nice visuals, very simple and clean. The format worked with it, you know, the message gets driven home. So just a really nice, nice format. Ah, okay. And so I think that's pretty much it for my formats that I'm sharing, but I wanted to tell everybody I have a special coupon code. Um, if anybody uh, is interested at the Fold Factory store, I have publications, we have templates, specialty die lines. Um, so 25% off everything, uh, FF25 off at checkout. So does anybody have any questions or anything? Is everyone inspired, I hope? Good, 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 good. Well, thank you very, very much for coming. Enjoy Girls Who Print Day. Um, enjoy your time in the Printerverse. And thanks for coming. I really appreciate it. Trish, don't you have samples to hang out, hand out? Oh, yes, we do. And, uh, oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, yeah, I wanted to share. Um, my friend Danielle Dejan from Sappy Fine Paper, we have some wonderful samples of um, the new Act Now direct mail publication from Sappy. So um, we have those. And then if we run out, um, just all you need to do is contact your Sappy rep to get a sample. But it's a new piece called Act Now, and it's all about the process of creating effective mail. I've done a lot of research over the past couple of years, and I worked with Sappy on this beautiful, beautiful publication. So I hope everyone uh, enjoys it. So we've got some to hand out as well. So. Enjoy your day. Hey, Thanks for coming. Trish, don't go away. Come oh. back here. <laughs> oh. um, and I'd like to ask my uh, Girls Who Print volunteers to come up and help hand out the samples. Uh, Trish, where do, they, where do they go to get those? Uh, I think uh, Deb had them over there. Uh, Deborah has them over here. So uh, go get those and, and help hand them out. And I want to tr thank Trish for coming and spending Girls Who Print Day with us. Uh, it's been fantastic. Thank you. We love Thanks. you. Um, she is our, our folding sister. <laughs> so, okay, now we are going to have lunch at 12. I hope you'll all stay. <clears throat> and then at 12.30, we are going to have a fantastic panel where you can meet the mentors. Um, I will be on that panel along with Pat McGrew, uh, Christine uh, Echeverria, Kelly Quinn Malazzi, um, Carrie Sherburn. Did I say Pat McGrew? I think I did. Yeah. At any rate, you're going to be able to ask us questions about how our careers have proceeded, and we are just looking forward to it. Come spend the whole day. We have activities until the show closes today. Thank you for being here. Thanks, everybody. Oh, Hi. 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 How was my time? I don't even know what time it is. Yes, it is. Oh, perfect. perfect. Exactly 1140. Yes. Good. Right. Wonderful. Hi. Wonderful. Okay. Well, I can, um, Thank you, darling. Oh, well, that was so wonderful. Thank you so much.